Hey guys, this is Jesse Schultz, and I'm joined with former Forest Wood Cup champion, Scott Suggs. We're on his lake, Lake Wachita. He's gonna give us the lay of the land today. We're gonna see a little bit of everything, and we're gonna know exactly how these guys are gonna catch them this week. Stick with us, we're gonna see it all. You know, if I was over here this week and I was gonna start on this grass, the first thing I'm gonna do is we've got coontail in this lake, we've got milfoil in this lake, and we've got hydrilla. And basically what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at hydrilla. So there's times I would throw, because there's holes in it, I can see it up there, it's not really matted all the way to the top, just thick. Sometimes I'd throw a horny toad over it. But most of the time I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna look for just the tops of the very outside edge of grass. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that jig and I'm gonna pitch it to one ounce jig and I'm gonna just give it slack line, just like that. You want it falling real fast through that grass so you get a reaction out of it. I'm gonna pick it up a couple of times. If nothing happens, I'm gonna pick the bait up and I'm gonna flip it again. I'm just gonna take off until I, until I figure out if those fish are holding in this grass, whether they're on the points of it, whether they're right on the side of the points or whatever. But like I say, I'm gonna pitch it, rip the line off, throw the line back at it, and you want it free falling as fast as you can get it to go down. It's basically a reaction bite is what I'm looking for with this jig. And whenever I'm, Whenever I'm doing that, if I, if I try this for a while and I don't get bit on it, the other thing I'll do is I'll pick up and go to more plastic, something that's not quite as big and bulky as the jig is, and I'll pick it up. I've got an extra big weight on this one right now, but normally I like a three quarter to a one ounce weight and just solid plastic like that, and I'll pitch it some and trying to, you know, just varying back and forth, trying to see what these fish really want. Do they want plastic? Do they want, you know, do they want that jig? And that's basically the way I'm going to cover this grass with uh, fishing this matted, you know, heavy hydrilla. Now, when it comes to changing and going and doing something else and looking at these other styles of grass, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at some milfoil. I'm going to go try to find me some milfoil. The thing about the milfoil, it's going to grow shallower than this grass right here is. The hydrilla is always going to be deeper than the milfoil. So I'm gonna go look for it next. If I don't get many bites doing this, and I'm gonna pick me up a frog and I'm gonna cover some water. I'm gonna try to find out if those fish are, are backed up in that mill full. Here's an idea of what kind of grass you're looking at. These guys over here this week are gonna be facing a lot of this. This is hydrilla. It grows on long stems, got kind of coarse leaves on it, and it'll grow really tall. This stuff will grow 15, 20 feet tall. It's gonna be that tall in certain places and everything. This is what they're going to be more apt to flip in. That's kind of what we've got growing here. It's the dominant grass right here is this. Another thing they're going to do is they're going to find some of this out. This is coontail. It's a whole different type of grass. It's going to grow real, th real thick. This stuff will grow so thick that when you look down in the water at it, a lot of times it'll look like a cedar tree, which you can kind of tell it looks like a cedar tree. And this really puts off a lot of shade, a lot of good oxygen and everything, and the fish will really hold on this. More than likely, if somebody finds this this week, they're gonna catch them like throwing a Texas rig worm around it, throwing a big 10 inch worm, 11 inch worm around this and fishing it in the coontail. Hopefully we'll find some milfoil, then we'll be able to separate all three grasses. When you find the milfoil on this lake and you're, you throw a frog in it, a lot of people, it'll grow way out like that, like that grass is right there, grow way, way out off the bank. You'll see people wanting to fish the edges of it and everything. When I'm frog fishing, like we got a grass line here, it wouldn't matter if it was over there, wherever it's at. Here's where I put my frog ever cast, is either right there, and I'll work him a little bit right there, but once that frog gets out, even if there was still grass under him, once that frog gets out to about right there, I'm reeling it in. These fish on this lake will bite a frog within a foot to two of the bank. I mean, see, I like that's what I like to do is throw it up on the bank, work it in the water. And once I get that thing out so far that I feel like that frog's over more than two feet of water, I'm reeling it in, I'm throwing again. These fish are gonna be right at the bank for those guys that do catch them on a frog this week. Back to the grasses, this is the hydrilla. This is, this is what we were talking about. It's a real coarse, real firm grass and everything. Here's the milfoil. It's real soft, it's real fine. And if you can find this, and you can find it matted up on these banks somewhere, find it in the back of a pocket, in a ditch, further on back where we're at right here, I'm sure there's some big flats of it, that's where your frog fishing's gonna take place. This is your flipping, 
That's your frog fishing. You know, this week there's going to be a lot of these guys that are going to try to stay out on that main lake. They're going to try to fish deep brush. I know I heard some of them. I hadn't heard anything lately, but back when they came earlier, when it was pre-practice, I heard guys on the internet, on the Facebook stuff, talking about how they idled for three days and looked and looked. Well, I mean, I'll be shocked if one of them wins that way. Um, I think it's a lot of wasted time. Those fish out on that main lake, they don't live like that this time of the year. They haven't in many years. Um, you Don't get me wrong, you can go out there and nearly every brush pile you can find out there that's in the right depth, that's going to be within you know, five feet of that thermocline, which is what really plays a key role in this lake this time of year, is uh, they're going to catch fish out of them. 95% of them are going to be spotted bass. A tournament, I myself do not think you can win a tournament out of fishing brush piles all over this lake. I just don't think you can this time of year. Don't get me wrong, there's going to be somebody pull up and catch a five pounder out of one, but is he going to be able to catch one out of every one of them or catch one every day like that? No. I just don't believe it's going to happen, but I still like to fish brush and I've got certain piles I fish and when I do, I pull up to them, I'm going to throw a, I'm going to always throw this first. I'm going to throw a big worm in there. It's a big Berkeley power worm. It's one of my most favorite colors. It's called red bug and uh, I'm always going to throw that in there first. I'm going to give it several casts, several opportunities to get a bite because if there's a good fish in there, He's going to bite this before he's going to bite anything else. Hey, if I if I don't feel like that, you know, there's a big one in there, but there still may be a bite in there, I'm going to back up. I'm going to throw a drop shot. I'm going to, I may even get right up over the top of them, and I'm going to drop shot. This is a robo worm. You can use the worm of your choice or whatever, but then I may drop shot some and, you know, make sure that whatever's in that brush pile, I get a look at before I leave it. You know, I always throw this bait on monofilament. I know a lot of people have really gone to the braid ideal, really like the braid and stuff. The thing about a prop bait and braid is the front blade will always, it has a tendency to twist up and wrap up in that braid. And you'll get about a half of your cast worked or when you twitch it, you gotta keep a tight line and pull on it to keep that braid straight so it doesn't, it, you know, it's not allowed to get in the prop. And with monofilament, you keep that line up on top, give the fish a good opportunity to get it before he feels you, you know, the stretch of the line compared to the braid, and then your bait fish is clean every cast. There he is. That's the deal, they're out further. I don't hate them hooks when I ain't got my pliers. Well, it looks like the Brian's B is going to play a role again this week. Look out, FLW contenders for the Forestwood Cup. Brim pattern still on. And by the way, good luck to everybody this week. Congratulations for being here to begin with, and good luck for the whole entire tournament. See you all next year.